updates, some things that are coming up that you can look forward to. I'll talk more about it um, through the next three days, but that's three things that are very, very significant that I feel that the body of Christ is being, um, you have an opportunity, I would say that, to just be stretched, be stretched. If you want to break out the monotonous of your life and your prayer life, these things will help you. You're going to have to get up out your comfort zone. You're going to have to leave the place where you say, well, I'm just going to do this. No, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to sacrifice. You want to be a prayer ambassador? It's going to take you getting out of your prayer closet and going into your city. It's going to mean I'm going to have to go out and be the light in my city. All right. So that's coming up. Um, looking for prayer ambassadors, prayer ambassadors. Amen that um, going to be coming up. So anyways, those things we'll begin to talk about very, very soon. Um, very, very soon. What are you? Oh, oh, got you. Got you. Okay. All right. Here are the mountains. Thank you, Lydia. Uh, we're going to Mount Carmel, Mount Sinai, the Egypt. Um, that's in Egypt where he was, Moses was given the 10 commandments. We're going to Mount Horeb uh, in Egypt. Also the burning bush um, and holy ground. We're going to Mount Zion, Mount Olive, and we're also going to Jericho. Yes, we're going to Jericho. And then, of course, the Garden of Gethsemane, I can't leave that out, um, is where we're going. So, um, and he's adding to that, but those are just some of the mountains that we're going to be going to. Mount Carmel, where Elijah um, had the face off with the prophets, Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, Mount Zion, Mount Olive, uh, Jericho, and the Garden. Amen. So just, again, keep in mind, I create opportunity. God brings the divine impartations. All right, let's get started this morning um, with what God is saying. I want you to get your script, get the Bible. First Thessalonians 1, 4 through 8 is where I'm going to read from today. Again, like before, I need to teach and prophesy whatever the Lord says, because again, when we come tonight at midnight, we need to pray into what God is saying. Yes, God, I hear you. The Lord is saying even now that each time I come uh, live, there's going to be an impartation. Hear what he's saying of the word of God in you. Why is this so important? Because it's going to be the word that's going to anchor you. It's going to be the word that's going to center you. In the divine will of God, too many of us do not read the word enough and we wonder why we waver. We wonder why we're all over the place. We wonder why we can't hear and get direction because the word is what keeps us. It is a word that that helps us from wandering around aimlessly. It is the word of God. And so the Lord is saying that each day, each time that we come, there's going to be a divine impartation of the word both prophetically and also um, through the written word of God. So 1 Thessalonians 4, let me just start with reading that before I pray. I don't want to go off into this way, um, but this is important. This is what I read at midnight tonight, last night, whenever time it was. It says, 1 Thessalonians 1, 4 through 8, it says, um, let me read out ESV. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit with full conviction. You, knew, you know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. Somebody highlight that. Know that you became imitators of us and of the Lord. Just say the Lord. For you receive the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we don't need to say anything. That is First Thessalonians 1 four through eight. When I begin to read the word on last night, God spoke to me. Now understand that this particular time enhance our stance has to do with God activating the glory. It has to do with him giving you another depth or another level of his presence and his glory. And so when I begin to read this, he spoke to me and he says that their character and their conduct 
must be an imitator of mine if they're supposed to carry the glory of God. What was he saying? He said, I can't just give this. I can't just give my glory and let them walk around with it. And their speech doesn't match what they're carrying. Their actions, their attitudes, their conversations don't match what they're carrying. You can't stand on the mountain and still talk the way that you talked when you was in the valley. You can't stand on the mountain and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ and still be mad at your brother and your sister. God is giving out his glory in such a magnitude and such depth that he's saying you're going to have to imitate not only me, but I need to make you somebody that somebody else wants to imitate. What's the character and the conduct of your life like? What does your life testify? Is there anybody in your life right now that says, I want to be like them? Or are they saying there's no way because of how you act and how you talk and what you do? My God, your children and your children's children, your grandchildren and your work people, they should, if anybody show up, they should be able to say, yes, that's a woman of God. I, will, I aspire to be like her. God wants people to be able to imitate you and him. So one of the things I'm going to be talking about during for the mountain, dressed for the mountain. But before he can get us dressed, he's got a deal with our character. And I'm not gonna really talk about character. I'm just gonna talk about us being a stamp, an imprint in the earth realm. So when we're talking about this particular scripture, let me give you a Greek word. Let me give you a Greek word that I believe is important. In this particular text, Apostle Paul and the other apostles, apostles, they had such, left us such an impression on the Thessalonians that they became an example of how to live and what to do in the earth realm. Their example was so effectual that they became, and here's the word, I'm going to spell it for you and I'll pronounce it, T-Y-P-O-I, T-Y-P-O-I. And it's actually pronounced Tupas, Tupas. The Greek word for impression is Tupas, T-Y-P-O-I. This means a stamp or an instrument that makes an impression. The apostles' uh, um, conversation was so powerful. Their attitudes, their character, everything that they did was so powerful. They carried the very presence and glory of God upon them that it left an influence to everybody that they talked to, that every place that they went, they, people knew they were glory carriers. They knew who they were. You didn't, you didn't find them caught up in a conversation that did not speak of what they were carrying. So when the Thessalonians were there, they began to look at Paul and they were edified by his example. So much so that when they begin to preach the gospel, their faith alone made them famous. Their readiness made them famous. They gave themselves up to God and devoted themselves to everything that God asked of them. Y'all know where we going? So what is God saying to us? It comes out of the sixth verse. And you became followers of us. And of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the spirit. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word. Father, I pray, God, that as we start this enhance your stance, as we start, God, going into the place, God, where you're going to dress us to be these glory carriers. Father, we're asking today, have your divine way. Move by your spirit. Speak by through your word, oh God. Calls up every listening ear that's listening right now to begin to have an experience with your glory. I pray, God, that the internals, God, of their hearts, God, begin to be dealt with. I pray, God, that their spiritual womb, God, begin to turn. I pray that their spiritual babies in their wombs begin to leap. I pray that when the word comes forth, oh God, that they would know who they are. Father, I pray for confirmation for somebody tonight, today. 
oh God, uh, that you will begin to confirm your word on the inside of them. Uh, confirm who they are. Confirm their character. Confirm what you've been speaking to them. Confirm, oh God, somebody uh, that's watching, you're looking for confirmation. Uh, and God says the confirmation is already on the inside of you. Uh, he says that the word uh, that's alive and active on the inside of you uh, is all the confirmation that you need. Uh, God says, I've already told you uh, where to go and what to do and how to do it, my God. Uh, and God says, now uh, I'm going to confirm, uh, not only is it your season and your time, uh, but I'm confirming, I'm confirming your identity uh, in glory, not just in Christ, the Lord says. Uh, Christ is glory, we understand the Trinity, uh, but God says that there is a new look for somebody. There is a new sound for somebody. God's going to confirm your identity in glory. What does that mean? You won't look the same. You won't talk the same. Listen, your walk won't be the same. Your ministry won't be the same. Nothing about you is going to be the same. There is another level. There is a new position. God wants to imprint glory in your life. He wants to imprint glory on your life so that you can then go into the cities and imprint your cities with glory. God says, how do you think that this next move of revival is coming? It's not coming through the church. Don't you see, saith the Lord, how I close down what man called my presence what man called uh, my gatherings I shut it down uh, because what I'm doing God says uh, is I'm establishing my glory who will usher in the very return of Christ. It is the bride who will stand upon the street corners. They will stand in government houses and they will not be denied interest, saith the Lord, because of the glory of God that resides on the inside of you. The Lord says during these days, I'm trying to, would you let me imprint the glory inside and around you? Hmm. Let me make you the glory carrier that others want to lead, wants to be an impression in their life. Let me make you the two pass. Let me make you, my God, the very stamp of approval in the earth realm. Listen, some of you have given up on yourself. Some of you have given up on your ministries. Some of you have given up on the call of God on your life. No, 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 saith the Lord. I was only waiting for the perfect time to stamp you with my glory. And the Lord says this, we're getting ready to go through a season. My God, I hear you where he's going to strip us even the more. But God says this will not be an external stripping, but this is going to be an internal stripping. But God says, I'm going to begin to deal with the, the, the character of your heart. I'm going to begin to deal. Yes, God. He says, I've already dealt with some, but he says there's a deeper level. But this hearts must be circumcised. But our eyes still judge through man's eyes. Our ears still perceive through our own hearing. God says I've got to do away with me oh God help us Holy Spirit I hear you we've allowed just anybody to speak in our life we've allowed anybody to just lay hands on us we've allowed things to enter into our lives that God says I must begin to go in and uproot the very seed that was sown, uh, my God, by man and not by my hand. Mm. God wants to imprint the glory in your life. He wants to cause you to be famous, not for your preaching, but famous because of your obedience and your faith. He wants to cause us, my God, and the bride, 
to stand up with such a fragrance and a glow in the earth realm that we cannot be denied into the entrance of courtrooms. Hear what the Lord is saying. He's saying the bride and the remnant that is about to arise will have such the imprint and the impression of glory that when they go to stand upon the court steps, when they go into government offices, I see this happening. We won't rise up to protest. We won't be the ones that they have to call the police on. We'll be the ones that will bring the peace, saith the Lord. My God, God says, count and mark the days. For days shall become darker than what they are now. But God says, as darkness grows, so shall my glory. As darkness starts to take over, so shall my people take over. God says, I am not losing. I have not forgotten the promises. I have not be forgotten um what I've spoken. God says, I am, I am getting ready to release the bride of Christ. All right. But I'm not, oh God, help me. Holy spirit. Mm. He said, I'm not releasing, hear me, religion. I'm not releasing church. I'm releasing the bride. I'm releasing the, the, uh, the bride of Christ. I'm releasing my people who are called by my name. Can I tell you uh, that we're going to enter into, I believe, 2021 uh, and maybe even starting soon. Uh, we're going to enter into a time uh, where God's people, the bride, the remnant uh, are going to begin to cry out like never before. We've quoted, we quoted 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 uh, so much so that it's been imprinted in our lives. Uh, but can I tell you, we have yet to actually perform uh, what 2 Chronicles 7 says. Uh, yes, we come together and we, we have prayer gatherings, uh, but we have yet to cry out as it has been demanded in God's word. But can I tell you uh, that there is a people uh, who are getting the impression of glory uh, and it's going to come through the vehicle of prayer. There is an impression that's coming upon your life. God says it is time to surrender. My God, it is time that we answer the call, not just to be in the fivefold, not just to be one that has a gifting, but we answer the call to prayer. We answer the call to crying out. We answer the call to gathering, not so we can just sit in a seat and hear somebody else preach. Can the impression of glory of God be so much upon our life that when we come out of a prayer meeting, huh? my God, and walk down the street huh? that the very stamp, huh? the two parts of God huh? begins to imprint, imprint the sidewalks huh? as we lay hands on the doors huh? of stores and businesses around us. Hey, the very impression of glory huh? from our prayer meetings huh? is left in the streets and on the doors. Yes, God. We're coming into a time. Yes, God, I hear you, a prophetic Goshen type. Um, the streams and the flow and the anointing and the power. The Listen, this is the time that the church should be prospering. And when I say church, I'm talking about the bride of Christ. You're about to experience, listen, so much of an overflow of the natural things. Why? Because God doesn't want your job to hold you back from answering the call to pray. God doesn't want you to be held back by the constraints of your own life. God says, I'm going to give my people more than enough the impression of glory. The imitation of the, that's coming. Uh, that make you an imitator of Christ uh, is all also going to come with the riches of Christ, uh, the riches of heaven. Uh, you think he's just going to give us his spirit uh, and not give us exactly what we need to do, uh, the will of God. Why? Because God wants to make sure uh, that nothing holds you back from going in all the way. Uh, listen, days are coming. Hear me. Uh, where God is going to call uh, the bride of Christ to prayer. I know I talk about prayer a lot, but listen, this is 
a different, different type of prayer. This is not just, oh, Lord bless, and somebody's leading prayer. No, this is the type of calling and crying out that God's been waiting for on the body of Christ. We should have done this a long time ago, but God said I had to shift. I had to move. I had to stretch. I had to increase the capacity because God says this that's coming is nothing like we've ever experienced before. Oh, the impressions of glory, the impressions on our character, the impressions on our speech, our conversations should be such as it was with Apostle Paul that when we speak, it leaves an impression on those that we're around, regardless of what the Thessalonians had to go through. They were willing to forsake it all. Why? Because they saw the example of glory on Paul's life. Can I tell you, God wants to impress the glory in you so that others would want your God. Right now, when we, oh God, help me, Holy Spirit. Right now, the world is looking and saying, I don't want anything to do with the church because all we're doing is having services all we're doing is preaching and that's good don't get me wrong we're supposed to be preaching and praying but is it leaving an impression is our services every time we gather two three five times a week is it leaving an impression on the character of God's people on the mindset of God's people is it leaving such an impression that when we go out people are saying please don't close the doors of the church I want to be like the woman of God I saw walking down the street is the impression of God happening in our church services so much so that when we walk in the grocery store when we go to the gas station when we show up at a work, people are falling down saying, what can I do to be saved? No, that's not happening. Why? Because we're just having church and we're not leaving an impression in the hearts of God's people. We have to begin to understand that what we used to do and how we used to move and how we even used to pray is not going to make it or not going to make the cut in these days do you do you see I, I listen you don't even have to agree i know your prayer life is not what it used to be not because you've done anything to make it less but because there's another press because there's something more and here's it here's the caveat it's going you're not going to get the more until you allow god to deal with your character you're not going to get what you've been asking for until you allow God to deal with your conversations. You're not going to get what you've been asking for from his presence until you allow the impression of God and of glory and of Christ to be so impressed upon your life that he can release you into the cities, into various places and fields, and they don't see you, they see God. If we're still getting mad at our brothers and sisters because of some type of opposition, you're not ready for glory. If you can't have a decent conversation with somebody without getting upset, we're not ready for glory. If you can't pick up the phone and call the one that hurt you or accept the, the, uh, or forgive the one that hurt you, we're not ready for glory. But we're saying, God, send it. God, give me more. But God is saying, can I leave the impression of glory, the two parts? Can I make you a stamp in the lives of other people? The Bible declared in 1 Thessalonians, it said that, they were, that it was an impression of, they wanted, that he, he was an imitator of Paul or the apostles and of God. So God is saying, yes, people should follow you as you follow Christ. Who are you discipling? Who's following your life? You don't have to be an apostle. So just to get people to, to disciple or to have people to, to disciple you yourself because of your character, your conduct and your conversations should have people. Knocking on your door, calling your phone, inboxing you on Facebook, telling you, hey, I see the glory of God on your life. I see what you're posting. I hear how you're praying. And I want what you want. Come and press and stamp my life. 
If that's not happening, we got to begin to lay ourselves on the ground and say, Lord, deal with my character, deal with my conduct, deal with my conversations. We should be so of glory carriers on the standing on the mountaintop that we don't even have to speak when we show up. But the fame of your faith, the fame of your obedience, the fame of your yes precedes you. It should be said, I know this woman of God. I know this man of God to be a man and woman of God. I know what their conduct and conversation is. They carry glory and I see it and I want it. Oh, Rabba Kereman Shorobo. Brengaman Shenamaye. Yes, God, we've given God partial. We've only given him a piece or we piece ourselves out to God. Oh, God, rekenenan di Dios saba. Rendi di oshin la lamandri akuri anda. God is looking and asking for our next level, our enhancement of our stance on the mountaintop to be holiness, holiness in our character, holiness in our conduct and holiness in our conversations. When Paul talks about in Romans 12 to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Paul was not just talking about your members, your, your body, your arms. He wasn't just talking about the physical man. He was talking about the soma and what the soma is, is every aspect of your your life. He was talking about the totality of who you are. He was referring to the capacity that you have to carry Christ in your life. Do you think that God is just in your prayer time? He's just when you go to church. He's just when you get and spend time with him. He wants to have your entire life, your very existence to be impressed and carried and stamped with the very glory of God. He's challenging us as the body of Christ to a new form of a living called holiness. Oh, well, that's not new. It's new because we've yet to walk in it. Holiness is not long dresses and, 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 and certain attire. Holiness is not your church. It's not a denomination. Holiness is your character. Holiness is your conduct. Holiness is how you act. If I'm going to be an imitator of Christ and his glory, that means that everything I do is encapsulated with holiness. Holiness is the fundamental reality of the expression of the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. Holiness is the fundamental reality. It is the reality of the expression of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? That means if, my, if I'm not expressing holiness, what's living on the inside of me? That's what that's saying. If it's the fundamental reality, the Bible declares in the Old Testament and the New Testament, be holy for I am holy. Again, not talking about how you speak in tongues and how much you go to church and how much you pray. Some of us pray all night, all day, and still got a bad attitude. Pray all day and all night and still our conversations aren't right. Pray all day and all night, worship, give, do all of these things, but we still don't have the impression of glory in our life. We are made holy because the Holy One lives on the inside of us. Our temples are the temples of holiness. Holiness begins as that internal quality and constitutes us to make a sacrifice which is holy. Everything that we do when we make a sacrifice, it becomes holy. Why? Because we carry holiness. And listen, the internal expression of the Holy Spirit is the outward expression of holiness in conduct, character, and conversation. Come on, tonight we're going to pray that, Lord, impress my conduct, impress my, my uh, character, and my conversation with your glory. 
When we imitate Christ, that means our life should be full and conscious and active to do the will of God. I'm going to mess with somebody right now. Listen, you still have not given God your yes. I hear you, God. I hear you. What do you want? Oh, share. Remanta da bakoria nana mashanda. Liega robo kuria nana mande. You are tied on the inside, the Lord says. This not external things that's holding you back. It's the internal issues. It's the internal things that are holding you down. I saw it in the spirit right now. You're chained to your own issues. And God is saying your issues aren't even an issue for me. But you can, you allow those issues to chain, to chain you down, to hold you back. My God, I hear you. The blood of Christ broke that chain, woman of God, man of God. The blood of Christ took care of that issue. God says, come unto me, lay it on me, give it all to me and stop picking it up. Holiness becomes thy house, O Lord. Oh God. Rema, yes God. There are some of you that are listening and watching right now. Listen, God has given you a space and a time. Hear me. God is saying, I've given you a space and a time. And I have waited patiently for your yes. I have waited for you to surrender your will. I've waited on you. You say, God, I want to give it to you. God, I want to surrender, but it's been those internal issues, those internal chains that are not even an issue for God that have held you back. It is time, man and woman of God, hear the Holy Spirit speaking to your life. I pray this be confirmation in the spirit room right now and you would feel the turning of the Holy Spirit that rivers of living water begin to run in your life. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to much of us today that now is the time. But God says, I've given a space of time and this year was our year to say yes. This year was our year to surrender. This year is our year to give it all to God if you have not if you yes God if you have not laid it all down given it all to God let him deal with the issue that you think is an issue if you have not let God I hear the Lord saying if you have not given it to him God says take the latter months that are we are in now and spend your time in me God says I need to take off layers I need to deal with who you are you think one way of yourself the Lord says but God says I've got a whole nother imagination for you God God wants to show you your identity in glory. God says, I'm ready to make the impression of who you really are in your life. But you've got to come to me. Yes, God. Pastors and leaders are here. There's somebody that's listening. Listen, you're a leader and you're a pastor and you've been called to leadership, but you have not yet met the measure as to which God has called you to. And God is saying, now is the time. Use these latter months, Maradi Osham, to get aligned with my perfect will. That means, listen, yes, God, it's not just about the food us will fast without food but we'll never spend time with God we'll give up and won't eat all day we'll run around do what we want to do and never spend adequate time with God God says stop giving me your food and you never give me your heart stop giving me your food and you never give me your time stop giving me your food and you never give me your character and conduct and conversations God says stop it because I'm not pleased with the fasting of men I'm not pleased with saying you're going to do it but you don't spend time. I'm not pleased, say it the Lord. I want you. I want your heart. I want your emotions. I want you. Come to me. Let me show you. Let me love you. Let me be who I am. To you. I don't want your food. I want you, saith the Lord. He come out of the asa, and he's saying, time is winding up for you to come and to give and to surrender your will. Oh God. Oh God. Rabba Kerobosa. Reba Yeka. You don't have a good enough excuse. Hear me. It is time. Why are you waiting? 
Don't tell me you don't have the time. Make the time. Man, I'm pleading with you men and women of God. Make the time. Make the time. Brekando roboshana. Be tired, but make the time. The winnowing winds, yes, God, are coming. And only that which been, has been impressed with my glory, only those that who have spent time with me, Rabbi, God, I hear you. Don't say that you love me and you don't spend time with me. Don't say that you're ready to sacrifice and you bring me offerings without a pure worship. God says, stop it. Stop, say it, the Lord. Come to me. Bring all of you to me. Bring me your issues. Bring me your problems. Eh? But bring me you. Time is winding up. Hmm. The impression of God that he wants to give you requires the totality of who you are. It requires a complete and utter uh, surrender. It requires the stripping off of the old. It requires that you be perfect. How am I going to be perfect? Matthew 5, 48 says, you must be perfect for your heavenly father is perfect. But this is not the perfect that we think of. Doing everything right, speaking right all the time, walking upright all the time. That's not the perfect that God was talking about here. He called in the Bible many men perfect. Noah, he said, was perfect. Abraham, he said, was perfect. Job was perfect. And we know that they did not do everything right. The perfect that God is speaking of here. He called them perfect not because they were sinless, but he called them perfect because the totality of what they did for God was perfect. Everything that God asked Abraham to do, it made him perfect and righteous. Everything that Job went through, it made him perfect and righteous. Everything. David, we know, was not perfect, but he had God's heart. That's what God is saying. I want to impress um, my life in you so much so that everything I ask of you, you do, which makes you perfect. They please God because they did what was expected of them. They were faultless and blameless and perfect because of their obedience. Some of us, the reason why we can't get a breakthrough is because we keep disobeying what God has asked us to do, big or small. God said, sow the seed you withheld. God said, pick up the phone and say, I'm sorry, you withheld. God said, walk around the block seven times, you withheld. God said, fast for three days, you withheld. God spoke to you to do it. And this is what is blocking. But listen, I declare that today and tonight and this next couple of days are going to be the days that the perfect one and the perfection of Christ comes alive and is activated. Yes, God, I hear you in your life. Here's what the Lord said. It just takes a repentant heart. It just takes I'm a sorry and a turning, not just sorry with lip service. Sorry, Father, I did not obey you and I'm sorry. And then ask God if you want me to do it again. Yes, Jesus. Ooh. Oh, ah, yeah. Oh, Jesus, said I'm a soul. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Get out, Sanan. Rubala lunde in Sotan, yes, sir. Yega, de caniobo. Hi, yes, 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 a robo. Rimane de hoco, riana masando, robori and die. Rumana masoca nina saya. We have a time right now. Rebati said no hoco shaya to be a dabaka reestablished in the will of God. Kando robo, shila and anando bo sha. We have a time and a space to be reestablished in the will of God. Help us, Holy Spirit. Ula yina mansaya. 
Mm. I don't never he care. Never who shana. Nikanda robo shana. Man di kori andalaba. Ask God. Ask Him. It about money and sanda. Where do I need to be reestablished in Your divine will? Whoa. Shekala mandi osa. Yes, you might have went to the left. Uh, yes, you might have got off course. Uh, yes, you might have disobeyed. Uh, but God says I've given time now uh, to reestablish you in my divine will. Robo boboni ande de basa. Leaders and pastors, God is giving time uh, for us to be re established in his divine will. We may have messed up, moved up, did something, but God is saying to us as leaders and pastors, God is going to reestablish them. Not that even, yes, God, not that it even, even was a sinful thing. God just said, some did not know what to do. And God says, just like Peter, after, after the crucifixion of Jesus, went back to what he knew. God said that some pastors and leaders did not know what to do, so they went back to what was familiar. And God says the familiar, my God, has caused a stagnation. But God says I'm going to give time and space for a reestablishing of leadership in the body of Christ. God's going to bring back ministry alignment. Yes, God. You, whoa. Yes, God. I'm about to experience. It's going to be a good thing. The real Alignment is going to bring the blessings. It's going to bring the rains. It's going to bring the healings. It's going to bring full restoration. My God, the realignment and reestablishing for leaders. Yeah, Pray for your leaders and your pastors. Anybody that you're under, pray for them. Call their name out. Bless their life, the Lord. Encourage their hearts. You don't understand, yes, God, what some of the leaders are going through right now. You see them smiling. You see them pushing. You see them keep going and giving. But God says the enemy is all out for the leaders huh, because he understands huh, that this divine alignment huh, and this divine, this divine reestablishment is about to set a precedent in the body of Christ. Oh my gosh. Robo hoshike ne mandri atobo isedema nama yeka rushalime niando boosha. Wow, Raka, get your leader and pray for them, bless them, encourage them. Mananamanta, let them know that you're with them, let them know that you're praying for them. Let ah, uh, Yakanama send them an encouraging word, cover them. It is your responsibility, the Lord says. Woo, Rabbi, the devil is a lie. Rekandari, these leaders and pastors that are committing suicide. The enemy should never get that close to a leader. I hear you, God. God is not happy. They're going through. Father, we take time right now and we lift up every leader. Anybody, God, that's leading in the season, I pray for them. I lift them. I cover them by the blood of Jesus Christ. God would just send an angelic host now uh, to run out every demonic force uh, that's encroaching upon their minds. Uh, I see color, Messiah. I speak to the day into their atmospheres. Uh, let these prayers uh, be carried, God, uh, from nation to nation, uh, from pulpit to pulpit, uh, from pastor to pastor, uh, from leader to leader. Uh, and I pray, oh God. Mm, Shift their atmospheres. Shift out the old. Shift out the demonic. Shift out the chatter. Shift out the discouragement. Shift it out, God. And send your fire. Cause the reestablishing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of everything, God, that they thought they lost. God is going to reestablish. Mm, my God, I pray for these leaders. Oh, Rabba Keremasa. Let them marry back. I call them back. Yes, God, I see some leaders. Oh, Rabbi, sitting in corners, about to lose their mind. I declare right now uh, that you will not lose your mind. I declare that you are sane. I declare that you are not going crazy. I declare that you will not lose not one thing. I declare that you will be able to get up and be restored. I pray that the strength of God comes over your life. I pray right now that you begin to see and do and move as God has called you to move. Roshimana Nasa Oga Rakando Roloboshi. 
Oh, God. Yes, God. Be perfect. Be an imitator. Let God impress <clears throat> glory on you. Mm, your character, your conduct, and your conversations. Come on, you know where you have faltered in, your, in those three areas. You know where God needs to impress. You know the place that you need to surrender and say yes to God. Nobody has to tell you. We know. We know. When, I, when Danielle gets beside herself, I know. Don't nobody have to tell me. When I get impatient and short, don't nobody have to tell me. I know. And I lay myself down. I say, Lord, deal with me. Reka, I keep hearing that, Scott. Yes. Yes. There is about to be a surge of prayer like never before. I keep going back to this. This is part of why God is wanting to clean up our character, conduct, and conversation. Because how we pray in and speaking in tongues and calling down heaven and our character, conversations, and conduct aren't in order. But God said there's getting ready to be a <clears throat> excuse me, getting ready to be a sound from heaven that's going to be impressed in your prayer life. And there's going to be great gatherings. Hear me, not just of, of, of nominal prayers and superficial cries. No. Mm -mm. It's going to be with such a magnitude that the sound of our prayers, the sound of our cries are going to be so resounding from nation to nation and city to city that is going to change the very fibers of our nation. Oh God, oh God, oh God. We blame it on presidents and we're blaming it on candidates. God says, no, it is the church responsibility to uphold my presence and my glory in the earth around. It is the responsibility of those who are greater than those who are in that, that are greater because of what is inside of us. We, it is our responsibility. If the world is the way that it is, it is because the church is not praying and crying out to God. Look at it throughout the Bible. When you go from chapter to chapter, you will see that even the kings who did not know God begin to cry out or call on the church and say, what do I need to do? And they begin to cry out. They begin to fast. They begin to pray and say, Lord, spare us. The children of Israel, he heard their cries coming and delivered them. It's going to be the cries that's going to deliver our nation. Mark it. Market, market, the Lord says. It's not going to just be the preaching. You will preach the gospel with your life. You will preach the gospel by being a tupas, by being the stamp, the, the impression of the very God that we serve. God has always worked through men, and now He's going to work through you. This is what God is going to do. Let me give you this and we're going to go. It's already an hour. And we'll pray through this tonight. How do I become an imitator of Christ? Or what does, let me say this, what does that look like? Let me give you uh, uh, six or seven of these. You can just write them down. If we are to be imitators of God, perfect as he is perfect, we have to show kindness, mercy, and generosity to everyone. If we're to be an imitator of God, we have to show kindness, mercy, and generosity to everybody. We must be ready and willing to do good any time the opportunity presents itself. If we're to be an imitator of God, we're going to have to have pure and holy worship. 
Worship not just in church or during your prayer time, but worship that shows the quality and character of Christ in all you do. Worship, true worship. Why? Because what you worship will weigh you down. What you worship will weigh you down. Some of us are weighed down because we worship our jobs. Some of us are weighed down because we worship our family. Some of us are weighed down because we worship money. But if you worship God, you'll be weighed down with the weight of his glory. To be an imitator, to be perfect as God is perfect, that means you have to love what he loves, and we know all the goodness, and you're going to have to hate what he hates. There's several scriptures that speak of that, but let me give you some. He says, I hate robbery along with unrighteousness. There are six things that he hates. Seven of these things are detestable. Lofty eyes, a false tongue, hands that are shedding innocent blood, a heart fabricated hurtful schemes, feet that are in a hurry to run to do bad or to do evil, a false witness that launches forth lies. God's going to deal with those who lied on you. You don't even have to worry about it. Anyone sending forth contentions among brothers. These are some of the things that he hates. So you have to be, you have to love what he loves and hate what he hates. Another one, you have to be honest in all of your dealings. Honest in all of your de dealings. Being dishonest is not going to bring the impression of glory. And I mean in everything, at work, at home, when no one's watching, that type of. To imitate God, that means you're going to have to be conscious of your conversations. You're going to have to be faithful and dependable. Let me just go through these. I have so much I can talk about. You're going to have to be forgiving and not so quick to judge someone by their shortcomings. You're going to have to be patient, long-suffering, and slow to anger. And to me, the most important one, if we're going to imitate God, that means we're going to have to imitate God's love. God is love. He's going to have to have enduring love. Love that covers. Love that doesn't judge. Love that says it's okay. Love regardless whether or not you feel like loving, you still love because that's what God would do. God wouldn't give up on you. Love. I'll stop right there. If we're going to be and imitate God, and his glory. He's got to dress us for the mountaintop. He's got to dress us and get us ready for what we're going to carry. Can you allow God to make you a tupas in the earth realm? That's your word for the day. God, make me a tupas, a stamp, an impression of your glory. That's what God wants to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. Lord, I pray. Mm, mm. Yes, God, I pray. Yes, God, I see this. He just spoke this. I pray the fire of God be an impartation to your life right now. I pray the fire of God surrounds you. Yes, God. I'm going to cause a hot fiery uh, glory and presence and power of God. Um, yes, it's going to surround you and it's going to burn up every work of flesh. You don't even have to do anything. Um, God says, as because you want it. I see the fire of God surrounding you. The very hot fires of God. I pray the impartation of the very fire of God. God is a flame. 
God is fire. I pray God himself begin to consume you. I pray God himself begin to burn you. I pray God himself begin to love you. I pray God himself through the fire of God begin to purify our hearts, purify our conversations, purify our conduct, and purify our character. God says, get ready, man and woman of God, because the fire of God is about to overtake your life. Not only through an impartation while you're sleeping, I hear the Lord saying, because I don't need the interference of your religion. I don't need the interference of your prayers and your words. God said that this impartation of fire is going to come when you least expect it. In your rest time, God says, it is going to be the fire that's going to confirm. It's going to be the fire that's going to speak. God just like the fire, the burning bush spoke to Moses and gave him an assignment. God says, I'm about to visit you, my God, in a burning bush type of way. I'm about to show you, Rabbi Kandari Oshamda, that I am who I say that I am. I'm about to give you the type of experience that confirms everything I've spoken to you in your life. The fire of God. The fire of God, huh? the fire of God be impartated, the fire of God be given unto you, huh? the fire of God in your hands, huh? the fire of God in your life, the fire of God on your feet, huh? the fire of God on your head. Huh? I see the fire of God. You will be known by the glory and the fire of God. They come together, saith the Lord. You will know my people huh? because they just won't be one dimensional huh? but you will know my people huh? because they will be multi-dimensional huh? they will carry glory huh? they will carry fire huh? they will carry the water huh? the spirit huh? they will carry oil huh? God says my people in the last day will be multi-dimensional people huh? the depth oh my God huh? the depths of our spiritual womb are increasing huh? because God says it's not just one glory Ha, Shalamandia, fire, spirit, oil, roba candaria, seek, roba baba. You ain't seen nothing yet. That's not good English, but I'm going to say it. You have not seen anything yet. If you think you're anointed now, wait until the fire of God. Oh, God, that's a whole other word. God's about to make us multi dimensional. Mm, mm, mm. That's a whole nother word. I can see that thing. Get ready. Get ready. Every gift and calling is about to be dimensional. They're going to think, oh, yeah, that's Dr. Danielle. She can pray. They go, oh, yeah, that's Dr. Danielle. She can sing. Oh, but y'all haven't seen my multidimensional stamp of glory and oil and anointing and spirit and whatever else. God's what God is going to do for you. You better declare that I'm a multidimensional mountaintop glory carrier. My God, Woo! that's a that's a that's a word all by itself. That's a declaration that will trans transform our lives. Oh God, that's good. Mm -mm -mm. I'm a multi-dimensional mountaintop glory carrier. Jesus in heaven, that's good. Listen, I'm gonna get out of here. We'll be back tonight at midnight. Midnight, if you're on the East Coast, 9 p.m. If you're on the West Coast, we'll be back here tonight. Whatever we pray, if we pray, we worship, we whatever we're going to do, but we're going to let God have his way. He is the great I am. He is the, the living, the living God who's about to do something supernatural in your life. I pray that you will take this and run with it. Let God deal with your character. Make, ask him, Lord, make me the two pass. Stamp, impressions, glory. My God, government anointings. I'm telling you, I see this. Some of you will have such a governmental anointing. Multidimensional it will be, but a governmental anointing. And I see this sitting at tables with government officials. Why? Not because your words are wise, but because you are too pass. They're going to say what you have leave in this chamber. What you carry, impress it, stamp it on us. We want to be an imitator of you because you're an imitator of God. Make me a two pass. 
All right. I love you. I'm praying for you. If you need prayer, you can reach out at 888-519-0404. You can go to our website, powerprayerradio.com, and you can send your prayer request there. Um, you can visit our new website, Empowerment Center 7. Yes, we're opening up empowerment centers all over the nation. We have three already that we're going to be opening very soon. And listen, if you're in uh, uh, Miami or the Florida area, if you're in uh, Philadelphia area, New Jersey area, if you're in Chicago or anywhere surrounding, we need your help. We need your help. But these centers, I'm one person. My staff is, is they go with me. We're looking for people that will just have the heart of God. Amen. We're looking for people who have the heart of God to serve at these centers. Amen. God is doing, or maybe God is impressing. You want to, you want to be a part of something. You want to sow into something that's going to be transformational in the earth realm. Each one of these centers, each one of these centers has an ark of the covenant that we are making. Well, not me. I ain't that skilled. Someone is making and it will sit there in the glory room. I know God. I know what God is doing with these arcs. But listen, it is, it is, if you just say, I want to be part of something, visit our website, empowermentcenter7.com. Um, you can find out more about the over there. All right. I'll see you tonight at midnight, midnight. Eastern time or 9 p.m. on the West Coast. All right. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. All right. God bless you. I love you. Take care.